Hey, it's Sarah Rosso from When I Have Time, and this is an Ask a Geek series, which I usually do when I get emails from friends. And I've been getting a lot of emails from people about WordPress.com recently. And um, not, not only do I use WordPress quite a bit, yay, I haven't even a shirt on. Um, I work for WordPress.com, Automatic, and so I have a lot of experience with the platform as well as using it, WordPress.org. So I just want to talk a little bit today about what are the pros and cons of using uh, WordPress.com versus self-hosting WordPress and maybe kind of clear up a little bit the misconceptions about um, using it. So the first thing I think is that people assume that you can't have a beautiful website on WordPress.com. This is obviously something that I don't believe. There's a lot of really cool sites, um, 200 and something themes that you can customize. You can add colors and fonts and things like that. If you know anything about CSS, you can even do a little bit of customization yourself. And um, I think in the future it'll be easier to do that. Maybe you'll find some um, <clears throat> some way to get help with that, etc. But one of the things that's not really clear is that WordPress.com is not the WordPress that you download from WordPress.org and install on a server. It has a lot more features built into it. So some things that our team has gone through and vetted or they've built entirely from zero to make sure that you guys have a better experience. So there's a lot of things in there that you're going to see that you would need a plugin for if you were to self-host it. So I think it's really easy to get swayed by the argument that you need this specific plugin or you need this specific feature when in a lot of times you might find an alternative that's available either, you know, self-hosting or on WordPress.com. So this goes back to my one of the presentations I did many years ago, which talked about how it's not really technology that's a problem, it's you not knowing what you want on your site. So I totally recommend taking some time first to really, you know, identify what are the essential features of your website before you go into starting to create that site. So it'll be a lot harder to sway you that you need this plugin or you need this, you know, feature if indeed, you know, your site doesn't need that. So um, a lot of times I hear someone saying, oh, someone told me I need this plugin where um, it may they may not need it at all. And uh, that is one of the reasons why they feel they can't host on WordPress.com. So I have three of my websites on WordPress.com, um, and two of them are using custom design. And so I've m tweaked some background colors and things like that on each of those designs. I've uploaded my logos. And um, I think that you should spend a little bit of time on theme.wordpress.com, seeing if you have some free or premium themes that could be interesting for you to check out. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about SEO and, you know, I would say that WordPress out of the box says about 80 to 90 percent of the SEO that you need just by you not doing anything and just writing, you know, writing descriptive titles and, and good content. Um, and then usually the search engines can do the rest and WordPress is you know, basically does a lot of things that you need it to do. Um, if you need a specific plugin, I, I can't say that all those plugins have really, I haven't seen any real proof that they're that much more effective than any, you know, just using WordPress out of the box. Something else you're going to want to do with your site, when you sign up at WordPress.com, you get um, a free URL like, you know, Sarah's website.wordpress.com. And that's something you can use to, to play with. You can, you can publicize that. You can do whatever you want with that. But you can also map what we call a custom domain on top of that. So if you had the domain um, Sarah's website dot com, you could map that to your site directly on WordPress.com. So a lot of people aren't aware of or don't take that step to actually map a custom domain on top of their WordPress.com URL. So <clears throat> I totally recommend doing that, especially if you know from the beginning that's somewhere that you want to go. We have a lot of businesses and a lot of high-end clients on WordPress.com, you know, like CNN, Time, People, BBC, um, and though they're not using the free version of WordPress, there are some other alternatives. You know, there's a there are some packages that you can get for upgrades if you want more space, if you want to use video, um, video in the sense of making and uploading your own videos instead of using something like YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, there's even a more sophisticated solution called WordPress.com Enterprise, which actually allows you to use some further plugins, which are, you know, available to a lot of our VIP clients, like I mentioned previously, UCNN and Time. So it's worth doing a little bit of investigating to see if there's something that you could use that, um, that you could use with WordPress.com. So when is it a good idea not to use WordPress.com? Um, obviously, 
I think if you feel that you're someone who really wants to get into the code and tweak the site at a PHP code level, then WordPress.com obviously is not is not for you. You can't modify the code at that level unless you're a VIP, and, and that's a pretty um, exclusive and expensive program uh, for what you get. It's too much for a lot of people. They don't really need that much functionality, but if you want to be in the code at that level, then you're probably going to want to self-host. If you are married to a particular theme that you know, you're know you already using, it may be difficult to find that theme on WordPress.com. Um, so that may be another reason. So those are two big reasons, I think. And again, coming back to the, I need this specific plugin, it's probably worth looking at if you really do need that. Um, and if you you know, have a list of plugins that you're currently using, you can look on the features and, you know, feel free to drop something in the comments. I'm happy to help you understand if something on WordPress.com is already available that you can use and you don't need a plugin for. So that's kind of a high-level overview of how things work on WordPress.com. I, it's frustrating for me to hear someone immediately suggest WordPress.org as a, as a solution because it's not always something that, you know, you want it's not always something that you're going to need to use, and especially if you just want to concentrate on writing your content and, and getting your voice out there. There's a lot of tools that are kind of available on WordPress.com and, and make things pretty easy. So, like I said, I, I'm on both platforms. Um, on a couple of my sites, I do still need to tweak things at a code level, and, and you know, especially with the legacy site. Um, I'm still looking at bringing over more sites as I move forward. Um, but there are some things that I really enjoy, which is, you know, never having to make a backup, never worrying about security, you know, never having to do any maintenance or, or updates. I mean, it's it's really nice. Um, and the more that I use WordPress, the less I am interested in really tweaking things at a code level. I kind of just want things to work and uh, let me do what I do best or better, which is writing content. So... Anyway, that's my Ask a Geek. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'm happy to answer.